Hey, it's Michael Waltrip, and welcome to Waltrip Unfiltered. We're coming to you live from our Fox Studios in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we got a great guest today. My buddy Spencer Gallagher from GMS Racing is going to sit down, and we're going to chat about all things NASCAR and how he got his start in this sport. And I got to tell you, folks, everybody I talk to in this industry loved the racing we saw at Talladega. The Saturday race with Tyler Reddick driving his butt off to get the checkered flag, and then Chase Elliott, million dollar bill from Dawson Bill's kid, was able to get the victory in the Monster Energy Cup Series race. And we've got a little tidbit for you, some news about Bill that happened over the weekend too. And we're gonna do it all right now. Green flag, green flag. Buddy, man, it's good to see you. Thanks Andrew for joining Martin. us. My pleasure to be here. Thank Spencer you for having me. Spencer Gallagher, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Welcome to my plush studio. Plush here is the word Fox for this. Sports. These accommodations are luxurious. Just kind of look around as we're chatting and just take in some of the scenery. There's a lot of history. My here. beautiful um, Kenny Schrader M&M's helmet God. is one of my favorites. I and like these helmets. This is a cool helmet collection. i tell you what I actually like. I don't know if the camera can see it, but there's a really cool picture right behind the camera, guys. It's of the old Daytona Beach uh, three uh. and four road course where they're all coming off of the uh, beach back onto the uh, the straightaway, the Daytona Highway. It's a really cool shot. I wish I could get it up for here, here and show it to you, but it's about 10 feet tall. <laughs> well, this uh, this is just a collection of things that, that mean a lot to me. They're awesome. And it means a lot to me that, that uh, you've taken some time to stop by. Thank you. Please, dude. It's, it's always a pleasure seeing you, Michael. Now, you're by coastal you um, you spend some time in Vegas, and you spend some time here in North Carolina. Yes, sir. What, what is a normal day? Uh, I guess it depends on which side of the world you're on. I was going to say, yeah. Um, what, what is normal for Spencer these days? In the event that I'm on this side of the coast, um, you know, my, my really daily routine hasn't changed. It's just what I do inside of it that changes. Um, I'm still a GMS every day that I'm out here. Um, you know, keep in touch with Mike Beam, keep in touch with, with Keith Barnwell, Chuck Spicer, um, Chad Norris, and, and our drivers, of course, all all the people at GMS. Um, I, I try to keep my finger on the pulse there and make sure that I'm abreast of everything that's going on, uh, as well as, you know, working with and, and kind of being a liaison to our development drivers. You know, that's become a very big thing for GMS, the um, Chevrolet Driver's Edge program, and it's something we're really trying to promote. And as someone fresh out of a seat, I love to take the time and talk to new drivers because I'm not so far removed from just starting down that road. Um, you know, we, we formed GMS out of nothing and I had to teach myself to be a race car driver from scratch. So I went through that process. I understand it. And I love to help kids along uh, however I can, because that's something I didn't have when I was coming in. Well, and you know, I love that because we we, we talk a lot about Toyota's driver development and how they put some kids on the map right off Absolutely. and the, the success they've had at Cobbish Motorsports. And, and there's been this opinion uh, in the NASCAR world that Toyota uh, got ahead of the curve a bit with, with their driver development. But I see the same thing happening with, with GMS. The, you guys have been the conduit for a lot of young racers to get a chance to see if they had what it was going to take to be successful and win in the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. K&N, ARCA, wh whatever, you guys have provided a lot of kids opportunities. Yeah, no, it's um, I'm, I'm going to correct you there. I don't think it was an opinion, quite frankly, that Toyota was ahead of the game on us with that. They They were. They were out there killing it. They realized that they need to be harvesting talent at this young local level to, to get them early, train them professionally from the time when they're really able to hold a wheel in a stock car. And that's how you get drivers like Eric Jones and, and Christopher Bell and all the success stories they've had over there. And we realized, you know, we're, we're kind of behind in the arms race here, guys. And so we sat down together with uh, ourselves, Junior Motorsports and, and Chevrolet, and we said, you know, we really need to hash out a plan here. It's to everybody's benefit if we find some kind of organized pipeline system that we can put together ourselves and begin bringing these young talents in from the time that they're in late models and showing them that there is a path to a Chevrolet cup car. And it's there. And if you're talented and you come in here and win, we'll show you one. I love that. And are there kids now running your K&N cars or late models that, Absolutely. that you um, have your eyes on that, that you're thinking, okay, y'all, well, watch we, this? Um, I, I got to tell you, you want someone to watch. Um, we have a young man named Sam Mayer, uh, and he put on one of the more impressive clinics I think I've ever seen any driver put on. I, it, for me, you know, it was a K&N race, but it was up there with um, Brad Kozlowski's performance at Martinsville. We rolled into Bristol, and by the time they threw the checkered flag, I was jocked rod. That boy put that car at P1 in the first half of first practice, and it did not leave there until the checkered flag <laughs> led both practices. Right. New track record, led every lap. Yeah. 
I want to tell you something to do different, boy, but I, damn, okay. So Sam is an incredible young talent, and that's not the only great result he's put together for us, but that was an amazing showing by him. Um, and he's going to be racing a K&N car at South Boston this weekend uh-huh. as well. And and you work in conjunction with Junior Motorsports on, on the Chevy drivers that we will see yes, eventually run – hopefully one of those GMS trucks and, mm-hmm. and into the Xfinity series. Absolutely. And Junior has been a huge, huge part of this process the whole way through and a humongous help, both with us and um, in, in talking to Chevrolet, you know, getting to the uh, the meeting table. You know, we, we had some ideas. I don't want to take too much credit. We come up with this, but it was it ended up being a group project. But I don't think we would have gotten nearly as far as we did if Dale Junior had not stepped up to the table and said, this is right. This is something we need to be doing and pursuing because this is for all of our future so my hat's off to him dale if you're watching we couldn't have done this without you buddy thank you yeah and he's his presence in the sport is still as big as it ever was it's unmistakable i uh i want to give us you know a shout out to the family obviously his his mother passed and there's a memorial service for her uh this afternoon that that i'll be attending and and the decals on the cars and chase elliott winning at talladega yesterday was uh you know he, he came up through that same system so it's, it's really cool to see the success that uh, that chase had and also just the um uh, the the emotion and the the feelings that everybody shared for dale jr and his family this weekend and kelly and and the whole family i don't think there could have been a more picture perfect ending to that um you know chase is is someone that's kind of been near and dear to that whole um junior hms crowd for a long long time he's one of the most beloved drivers around uh, he's an amazing guy, and, and to have him pull off the victory in such a dramatic fashion, too, on Sunday, carrying that name aboard, I can't think of anything more special. I can't think of a better way um, to honor. You know what I love? Um, Bill Elliott got famous at Talladega. That's where he ran 212 miles an hour. And, you know, it was they like, weren't far off that on Sunday. <laughs> they weren't too far, I'm you're right. You. And, the, and the racing was, was awesome, Ooh, crazy, was wild. fun action. I haven't the... seen cup racing at a play track that fun in a long time. I couldn't agree more. And we were fortunate that we did a little uh, uh, hot pass caffeine live streaming. I know you're a it guy so you understand they said we're gonna do caffeine i'm like cool i like coffee yeah give me some more yeah Come i'll on. have some of that and <laughs> bring it <laughs> and uh, we did the uh, caffeine for the whole race and just that's awesome went behind the scenes went in the garage area when somebody had a crash out into the infield and visited with some of the fans and just had a really good time but the product on the track like you said it, it was great and to see chase elliott and the way the fans reacted to that oh, goodness, victory yes. it was awesome to see them all cheering uh, when chase hopped out of that car superman brings home the bacon you're going to see people on your feet <laughs> man it's that's just how it operates and that was that was a storybook ending for chase and you told me something i didn't know what what bill do that oh yeah so get this guys chase was not the only elliott to pull off a victory this weekend bill won himself in his vintage class down at road atlanta on sunday so we got two elliots with two trophies i hope they sounded the pool hall alarm twice. Oh, I hope they didn't. That I would be a very did. serious breach of protocol. If they and didn't. I will tell you what's going to happen here today. We leave this podcast, mm-hmm. this this time that we're sharing together, which I want to tell you again how much I appreciate. Incredibly. I'm going to Hooters, and I'm going to get me 10 free wings. That's a great idea. Why did I not think of well, that? Well, I'm just here to help. I'm I'm here to, to mentor. Michael, you are a font of incredible ideas. I just uh, I have so much in here that I, I'm just so thankful to get to share and appreciative of the opportunity to do so that's that's something that um this podcast has helped me and 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 it's been a benefit to me because you know i know spencer gallagher we've been buddies since you showed up but you know you read notes and you get to know a little bit more about the person and who and who he is and it was the same with brett moffitt and the same with john hunter nemechek your driver uh it it enlightens me and it, it, it makes me smile that I'm old and I'm learning new things and, and getting to, to sort of enjoy the sport through different eyes, if you will. John Hunter last week was was just incredible to, to listen to the stories of people thinking he's just a, a rich little spoiled brat out there racing a car his daddy gave him. He said, well, actually, I built that car. So when I tore it up, I understood what it meant. JH and, is legit. Yeah, he is. And he's doing a great job for you guys. Another top ten finish. Mm-hmm. I think is that seven out of nine or something. I believe so. Uh, that kid doesn't miss. He, yeah. Uh, even if he has an off day, it's still a good finish, and that's why you put people like that in the seat, man. Well, it makes perfect sense to me um, that John Hunter uh, understands the the work ethic and everything that goes into being a NASCAR driver. He grew up watching his dad race, and so he made it to NASCAR. 
that's that's a great accomplishment. It's sort of how I grew up. Uh, my brother was removed. He was off. When I was born, he was 16, so he was off racing. But that's all I wanted to do was watch races. And so it, it sort of made sense I showed up. Your story is quite a lot different. Just a little bit. Yeah, growing up in Las Vegas, and and I didn't didn't really understand or know how you became um, so interested in racing, but it was through a friend, right? Yeah, uh, it was through Spencer Clark. So before I got started um, really racing, I want to say around 2011 or so, something like that, um, I was part-time racer, full-time nerd. So I was, yeah, I was. I was, a, I was an IT geek. I was a good one. Um, so I lived in Las Vegas, and I eventually moved up to San Francisco um, before I started racing. Uh, but, you know, Spencer, Spencer Clark... Um, was the son of the guy that uh, kind of got me and my whole family into racing, named of TJ, um, and he was an astounding racer. Uh, he was, he was, he was incredible. Go ask Kyle Busch about him someday. You won't get a nice answer about him, but you will say that he, he was, was tough. He was something. And yeah. if he was with us today, he, I have every belief that he would be in the Cup Series, duking it out for wins with uh, Kyle and the rest of them, week in, week out. Um, unfortunately, about uh, 2006 or so. Uh, Spencer was was hauling a car back from here, an Xfinity car, um, back from here to Las Vegas. Um, and he and his friend were in a car accident um, going through New Mexico, and they both got killed. Mm. And that was that was a really tough day for myself and, I mean, hell, everybody involved. That was uh, – I lost a good friend. TJ lost a son, and the whole racing community lost a star, I think. Especially out in Vegas, that was a a big void that got filled. Hell, TJ didn't go to a racetrack for years. Yeah, I, I don't want to take credit, but I was. I hope I was one of the people that got him to go back. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, after that, I, I continued racing, continued racing. Um, but around 2008 or nine, uh, a couple of years later, I started really getting quite good in a legend car. And TJ sat me down one day. You know, you ever consider doing this seriously, kid? No. And two hours later, he convinced me to give it a shot. I mean, I was I was fine and content to go off and work on computers for the rest of my life, but he told me that I had a talent for this, and no one ever really had before. So mm-hmm. I trusted TJ, and I, I listened to him. And it's a long story since then, but, you know, I'll never stop being grateful for the influence that he had in my life. Um, I think TJ has been one of the most important people in my life. And Spencer's number is on, on y'all's cars, 23, and I know it was really tough on you the day that your father – shared the news about the loss of Spencer. I, I remember I remember every detail of that conversation, unfortunately. Um, I was, this is 2006, so I'd have been 15 or 16, and that's when I was professionally nerding. Um, I worked down in the IT department at Allegiant, cutting my teeth. Uh, and, you know, one day I went up to see him. It was time to go get lunch. Let's let's roll, Dad. Um, he's just sitting there. His computer has a weird look on his face. And he's saying, what's going on? Spencer Clark's dead. Shut up. We're going to lunch. Spencer Clark's dead. Oh, that's not good. Um, that's that's when I, I pretty much went straight to TJ's house after that. And yeah, that was it was a bad day. Well, it's awesome that that your team still honors him and 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 you give credit for. I mean, you've built you and your father have built an amazing operation, mm-hmm. and it grew from. TJ and Spencer. None so. of the GMS racing would have ever existed without the help and influence of Spencer and TJ Clark. I, I owe everything we are to them. And, I can't overstate that. And that's that's simply amazing because you see cars and trucks on the track, and and all you do, it 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 had to grow from nothing. And and the inspiration for that that's that's just a great story. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I appreciate it. It's it's. I just try to honor his memory, man. That's that's what this is all about, you know. We we knew he had the uh, the potential to be a superstar, but I like to think we've we've done the next best thing. Is just we built a racing organization, um, in many ways ar- around the spark of his memory. Well, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Help me here. I'm I'm a rookie at this, but there's an airline, Allegiant. Mm-hmm. That that did your father start it? Um, no, he actually. Um, took it off of a friend of his who was trying to run it as something entirely different um, and failing quite badly at it, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, and, you know, he said, eh, it's, I'll, I'll take this over and we'll, we'll try something. Um, and the reason you do that, just for everybody's edification, 
FCC certificates are really, really hard to come by and just plop one out of New Air and you have to have a certificate if you want to operate any kind of airline. Much easier to find a defunct one and buy that certificate. So that was the genesis of Allegiant. Um, and it's grown into something amazing since then. Yeah, yeah. huge. It it's provides such great service to so many people. You can get from smaller destinations mm -hmm. and, and the pricing is, is certainly very uh, friendly. And um, I just uh, I appreciate I love entrepreneurs. Oh, thank you. And entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Close uh, enough. Let's back up. I love entrepreneurs. I'm going to sound so smart when I say that correctly, Spencer. Um, and th that's who I was when I started Michael Waltrip Racing. You know, Absolutely. I had this dream. I wanted to race my Toyota cars, and I wanted to have chrome wheels on them, and I wanted my shop to have a, a bowling alley and a Hooters in it. You know, I wanted it to be a destination. Um, it worked for a while, but... It worked you, quite well. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We finished second in championship, won races, so mm -hmm. we did we did well. But but your father had to have that same mindset and your your family in order to be able to grow Legion into what it's become. Absolutely, you know, if 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 Dad's ever been about one thing, and this is why he's my hero. He is he's a, he's a grower. He loves to take ideas, take people, and help them flourish and help them develop. I've watched him do it all his life. He starts with little companies and finds ways to get them big. That's that's his passion. Um, that's what he does, and that's what he's good at. And I think he really applied that philosophy at GMS, and, you know, it was frustrating at first. This was an industry unlike any we'd ever seen. Um, we were building our own cars, and basically a, a couple of yahoos from Las Vegas with a pair of kick-me signs on our backs. So um, we got run around a little bit when we first got here, but we quickly kind of found our feet. Uh, I think the turnaround really came when we got Mike Beam on board. He mm -hmm. is, I mean, I can never over-talk that man. He has been invaluable to he, everything He was my crew chief done. in 89 yeah, see? When, when you were born. Yeah. So. <laughs> I've known him a long time. Mike has just amazing stories. You get a beer or two in him, you will hear things about Junior Johnson. I mean, just have you got you're just busting up? Yeah. Oh God, stories I couldn't tell, man. Incredible. Yeah, he's a he's quite the special guy, and he's been around this industry his whole life. And oh, yeah. so, what a great person to have in place for your you and your father to be able to lean on. Uh, the joke I, I always like to make is, um, and if if and I don't wish this on them, but if a bunch of different people were dead mike could write a great book <laughs> mike could write an incredible book about the history of nascar we just got to wait for some people to die but i mean he is he's an amazing resource to have around and such a great guy too it's it's i don't think we could have gotten any luckier than finding mike so so you you were on the airline it's flourishing and and so you become you want to become a racer your father so that'll be something for me and my kid to do together and and it started like that mm -hmm. with uh, with spencer clark's uh, ideas and 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 his memory that you're honoring going forward and so let's let's talk about gms it you said you got run around a bit when you come to north carolina i remember talking to your dad like three of we, we played golf together three or four years ago and he said you know mike this just isn't a very good business and i said no i don't i think i agree because i that's about the time my team was closing we, we couldn't make it work and, and it's difficult but but i I heard in his voice, it's it's not a very good business, but I, I think I'm going to figure it out. And and I just, I love that about him. Determination, man. If, if he's got one thing, it's determination. Um, and, you know, he wanted to see me succeed. He wanted to see GMS become a, a, a top flight team like it has today. So, you know, he didn't give up and, and neither did I. We kept working, kept finding better people, better equipment, better facilities. Build, 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 man. And little by little. Um, we started attracting the right folks. We started getting cars that were competitive, and we started making a name for ourselves. And we've done nothing but build on that over the last three years. And uh, it's amazing to see where we are now next to where we started. It you, always blows my mind. You know what I love, and, and I get to do the Xfinity races when we talk about the speed that John Hunter has and, and GMS. You know, GMS is, is right there with Penske and Gibbs and Junior Motorsports. That's quite a statement to make. I know there's been quite the uh, investment financially, but but you money you can't throw money at this forever. That doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. You got to have the right people, and and you're you're in a great place. And we certainly saw, you know, when you got Johnny Sauter in the Truck Series and he won the championship. Was that like six, 2016? I think. Yes, yeah, 16. Yeah, he yes. won the yes. championship for you guys, and you win races. You bring all these young racers in. Uh, Justin Haley doing a great job. You winning behind the wheel, um, ARCA trucks and the Xfinity series, it, it just, it's just a, um, it's a perfect 
scenario to say, okay, we're going to go cup racing, mm-hmm. but we we haven't made that decision yet. We've all we've we've stayed we've stayed in our swim lane so far. What's what do you think the future is for GMS? Oh, the future can hold anything, man. Right now, with the development program um, going the way it is, I think. Uh, there's a very bright future for all things. Well, we're keeping our noses down about working on our Xfinity teams and our truck teams this year. Um, I think kind of the theme from the end of last year to, you know, beginning of this year, you notice we contracted a little bit. We went from effectively running five trucks to three. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've kind of concentrated those efforts down uh, into our three trucks as well as redoubling our efforts um, in the Xfinity program. Uh, you know, it's it's... It's been a lot to put in, but I think that was kind of the big theme we went for this year, and it's really shown results. Um, we're showing great every weekend. Our development program's going strong, so who knows what the future holds for us, but right now it's looking pretty all right. Well, when you're a racer, and, and I said this a few times at Talladega this weekend, I guess especially as a kid growing up in the South, Talladega was scary. Like, when I was – people got killed there, you know? Mm-hmm. My brother was racing there, and I remember – I must have been a sissy because I would I would almost be in tears just because he was racing there. But as I got older, I'm like, that place is really cool. <laughs> I can't wait to go race it. And to, to to have a victory there, it's it's you know, there's just some tracks that it's it sounds better that you won at Absolutely. Than others. Uh, uh, Talladega's got that ring to it. Well, and you rang that bell a year ago. Uh, that victory you just you made the right moves at the right time, and and you drove the perfect race and won at Talladega. Congratulations! I've told you a hundred times. Thank you. But again. what 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 did that look like through your eyes? Could you believe what was happening? Did you feel like when you started that race that you were going to be the guy they were going to have to beat to win? You know, I thought um, I knew just from practice that we had a really really fast uh, Legion Travel Camaro that weekend, uh, and I knew in the race, man, this car's finished. This car's freaking fast, man. I knew if we could get um, keep our noses clean, always important to Talladega, and be near the front at the end that we had a real shot. And I wish I could tell you I was thinking a whole bunch of things when I was out there making all those moves, but the reality is, man, your head's on such a swivel. You're paying attention to so much raw input data all at the same time. You're trying to simultaneously watch what's in front of you, which not a whole ton. It's an open racetrack if you're leading, but behind you, yeah. trying to keep a whole swarm of angry bees in your taillights, <laughs> and then you're having to take all that information and synthesize it with what your spotter is telling you. I mean, these are very stressful times. You're leading the race at Talladega coming to checkers, so um, I just remember the, the I, I kind of remember the beginning of it and the end of it. I remember very distinctly. I saw Brandon Jones float just a little bit too high going into three, coming to the white flag, and I said to myself, if I time this just right, I can be side-by-side side for the lead at Talladega coming to the white flag, and it's on from there. Um, so I got myself underneath him, and, you know, I'm not going to say it was it, it was a perfect move, but, um, you know, it's not like I'm some kind of god. I made a really good move just side-drafting uh, Mr. Reddick, just that little extra bit right before we turned off into one and let the thing run to the bottom of the hill. Um, physics took care of getting me in the lead there, and from there it's look in your mirror and block your yeah. butt off, man. But the next thing I really remember is crossing that finish line, seeing the checkers, and my chest just exploded. I, I just instantly was overcome with laughter. I yeah. remember that. I, I just started to laugh. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. We won, guys. We've just pulled this <laughs> off. A Talladega. It was, it was something else. And you mentioned Tyler Reddick. He, he – is an awesome race car driver. That kid's an unnatural wheel, man. I mean, unnatural. it's crazy what it's he astounding. did this 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 past weekend. Your win was was dramatic and exciting, and and his was the same. I watched him make a block, Spencer, one time so aggressively it left black marks. Tyler he, Reddick did that, you say? <laughs> or you're not surprised, hmm, right? Let me find my shocked face. <laughs> No, that and, kid's and, a wild man, dude, but that's why he wins races. Yeah. He's brave, he's bold, he takes decisions and takes chances that others won't. And listen, sometimes it doesn't turn out for him. Sorry, Tyler. You... Well, he knows. But hey, look, you've got that Talladega win. There's a reason that that kid is making himself a name for himself as a feared plate racer. There's a yeah. reason he's up front at those right. races. And it's because he does stuff like that, man. It's because he's brave and bold. And that's that's what it takes. Fortune favors the bold in this business, so I applaud him for it. Oh, I do, too. I, I loved watching every minute of it. What a great weekend of racing we had at Talladega. Mm-hmm. So much fun over there. Now we're going to turn our focus toward Dover, see what John Hunter is able to do up there in the GMS a car. Cool and uh, you got your trucks running as well. Yes, sir. So And k and cars at South Boston this weekend, too. Ah, and Sam's racing there. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. do you have any more K&N cars? 
I think we're just running Sam um, in the uh, in the ARCA and KNN series kind of combined right this second is something of a partial schedule. He's 15. He's still in school, so yeah. he can't be racing every weekend. Yeah. We forget how young these kids are sometimes, but yeah. um, I look forward to uh, to some pretty impressive results out of him in South Boston. He's a good little short track racer, man. Yeah. And where did he grow up? Uh, he's from out of Wisconsin. How about that? So him and Mr. Kenseth uh, kind of share an attribute there, so... It's good, good portending for you. Yeah, I was uh, on the grid at Daytona 500, and J.J. Watt was there. He's a Wisconsin there you go. guy, and he said, I want to go meet Paul Menard. I said, perfect. Menard's, Menard's right it. down the way here, so we had a minute to talk to him. Uh, we talked a lot about racing, but a year ago, your, your direction uh, got flipped a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you were suspended by NASCAR, and I just wonder, you, you appear to be embracing the managerial role and, and helping – direct and be a, a part of the GMS management. Is that your, you, you said earlier, who knows what the future holds, but is is that your direction uh, going forward? Is that something that you're really enjoying doing? Well, it, it's definitely something I'm enjoying doing. Um, a philosophy that I've always held really close to my heart ever since this thing started is that GMS is bigger than Spencer Gallagher race car driver, just is. Um, and I made the decision to, to get out of the seat at the end of the last year, two reasons. One, so I could spend more time in Las Vegas with my family. I realized, quite frankly, I'd spend the last 10 years out here doing nothing but driving race cars. And if my dad or mom kicked the bucket tomorrow, I'd have never forgiven myself. Never. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, too, is I, I meant it. You know, I believe that I have a lot of skills and a lot of talents um, that are applicable to GMS outside the seat. And I've felt that way for a long time. And, you know, I'm having a lot of fun getting to, to be in that role and, and to do those things, you know, it's something, it's a role that I always kind of had, um, regardless yeah. of, you know, whether I wanted it or not, that was something that was, I, I just always kind of got thrown in with me from, from day one, just because of how the situation ended up playing. But, um, it's a role I've embraced, you know, I'm, I'm Maury's son. I love to grow things. I love to watch people flourish. That's, that's what gives me joy. So believe me when I say I'm having as, every bit as much fun in the top of the box as I am behind the wheel. That's awesome to hear. And every everybody's different. And I try to tell people all the time when they say, do you miss it? Well, I kind of miss it, but I'm perfectly fine. Like, I'm, I'm happy with life. I'm, I feel blessed that mm-hmm. I got to do something that I love to do. And, and I'm, I'm also really happy to hear you say the same thing, that you're enjoying your role. And, and um, Maury, Maury's got to be proud of his son that uh, – that he's able to take the reins and uh, it's um, certainly it certainly keeps him from having to travel too much. So I think he likes that bit of it. Uh, less plane rides for him, he can just give me a call. But um, no, it really really is cool to to wake up every day and to go and get to be part of something that you know is bigger than you mm-hmm. and that's producing such great results that you've spent so much of your life and energy on. Mm-hmm. That's that's something that fills me with happiness all day long. That is so cool. And your dad, he. He's getting to relax a little bit, play a little golf these days. Just a little bit, yeah. just a little bit. Um, he recently had his hip redone about two months ago, so uh, he's just starting to uh, get back on his bike. He's getting moving again, um, and he's getting right back into his golf. He can't slow that man down. It's incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. He's man. Iron Man. I, I can see that the um, – the how do you say it? The, something didn't fall too far from the tree. Apple? Yeah, the old apple thing. Because, a tough word to pronounce, Apple. Thank you. I, I'm from Kentucky. I struggle with uh, some of my dialect, but it's it's really fun to see that his energy and and his uh, his determination lives uh, clearly through you and or in you, and I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Well, um, this is the part where I'm supposed to da 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 da. da. <laughs> supposed to eloquently Just finish cut, this thing. Cut up. to black. That's so it. Go to black. We finish the show. Thank you, party people. Love you all. See you soon. Thank you for watching Walter Unfiltered. Will you take this over? Absolutely. Hey, gang. Thanks out there for watching Walter Unfiltered. This is Spencer Gallagher signing off. Y'all have a great one. Hey, uh, who's got the craziest hair? Who do you think? Bring it on. (sighs) Glue steel. I don't know if you know or not, but one day I punched Lake Speed. Nice. Have you seen it? Yes, actually, yes, yeah. I kind of recall that video. And so I get, I get, uh, I get made fun about that quite regularly because he was, a, he was first of all kind of a little feller. And At least you got a punch off on him. <laughs> he, but he was strapped in his car, and I hit him. But I told people, I said, "Listen, 
I hit his helmet. I was just saying, he was wearing a helmet. I wasn't trying to hurt him. I was just expressing my displeasure, frustrations. my frustrations. Yes. yes. Um, you got in quite the tussle as well I one had me day. a wrestling match. <laughs> I, I think it looked like, you know, just a struggle. Like, I'll you, tell it you was a secret. standoff, and then, and then down you went. I'll, down goes Frazier. I'll tell you the secret. That whole time, I was thinking to myself, Spencer, you're on national TV. Do not punch this kid out and get fined. <laughs> Do not punch. And that's Just, what I was trying to tell him, too. Like, if you see me moving my mouth while we're sitting there, John... We're on TV right now. Let's not do this shit because we're both about to eat $20,000 here. And what I learned from that experience is that if someone steps out of their race car and wants to fight you, pacifism will get you nowhere. I got fined all the same. Learned a valuable lesson that day. Next time it's going down, right? Yeah. Fortunately, I never had to exercise that lesson, but it was always there with me. If someone (laughs) wants to throw blows, you're going to get fined all the same. Put them in the dirt. I told him, I'm like... Maybe we should go to break. Like yeah. it was it was lasting. No, a I was while. hoping I was hoping you did. <laughs> you didn't, by the way. Thank you. On the bright side, I'll forever be an ESPN highlight. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and I will be right there with that you. That is something a lot of people can't claim. That's something you and I have in common. Boom, Boom shock Put it there. Man, that was a lot of fun. Really appreciate my buddy Spencer Gallagher stopping by. So much insight. Glad to hear that he's got so much going on up at GMS Racing in Statesville, North Carolina. If you're out and about, you ought to check their shop out. Listen, tell your friends. Be sure to use their favorite podcast app and add us so they can listen to the fun as well. And give us a five-star rating because i got to tell you, we're a little sensitive over here. We like those five-star ratings. We're going to go up to Delaware, race on the concrete, and get some crab cakes. And when we get back next week, we're going to sit down and review all the action. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you then.